You're probably used to solving straightforward equations and geometry problems, but sometimes it's not quite as easy to figure out how to translate a word problem into an equation or a picture. The good news is you might not have to. Simply figuring out the logic behind a problem is often all you need, and drawing pictures will help you process the question. Don't worry if you're not much of an artist, neither am I, but I'm going to show you how to draw your way to a test score you'll be happy with. Let's jump right in with a problem. A company that sells two types of paper keeps twice as much of type 1 in stock as it keeps of type 2. Currently, the company has a total of 21,000 pounds of paper in stock. How many pounds of type 2 paper does the company have? Our answer choices are A, 7,000, B, 10,500, C, 14,000, D, 18,500, and E, 42,000. We'll start by underlining the important facts to help us understand what the question is asking. Two types, twice as much of type 1 as it keeps of type 2, and a total of 21,000 pounds of paper. Now, we'll circle the keywords so we have all the information organized. Pounds, type 2, paper, and company have. Finally, we want to label the answer choices. We're solving to find the amount of type 2 paper. Now we're ready to draw a picture to represent the facts. We know there's twice as much of type 1 as type 2. To represent this, let's draw a box for type 1 and a box one half the size to represent type 2. We can label them type 1 for the large box and type 2 for the smaller box. We also know the company has a total of 21,000 pounds of paper, so let's add a plus sign and equals 21,000 to show that we're adding type 1 and type 2. Drawing boxes to show that one is twice the size of another tells our brain, without further reading, the relationship between the two types. Now, let's solve the problem by back solving. Since we're being asked how much type 2 paper there is, the answer choices are amounts of type 2 paper. We want to start back solving using the middle answer, in this case, choice C, 14,000. Depending on the outcome, we'll know whether we need to plug in a smaller number above it or a greater number below it. So we'll say that 14,000 is the amount of type 2. Let's label our type 2 box 14,000. Since there's twice as much of type 2, we can multiply our 14,000 times 2, which gives us 28,000. Let's write that below our type 1 box. If we add these two amounts, we'll see that 28,000 plus 14,000 does not equal 21,000. So let's cross out C. Now we know that we need a smaller number. Let's try choice A, 7,000, since it's our smallest option. If type 2 is 7,000, then type 1 is twice as large. 2 times 7,000 equals 14,000. Let's add 14,000 plus 7,000. This gives us a sum of 21,000, which is exactly what we're looking for. Answer choice A is correct. Give yourself a little round of applause for that one. All right, the drawing picture strategy worked well for us on the algebra word problem. Now, let's apply it to a geometry word problem. The question asks, in inches, what is the perimeter of a rectangle with a width of 4 inches and a length of 10 inches? Our answer choices are A, 14, B, 18, C, 28, D, 40, and E, 160. As always, we'll start by underlining the important facts, which are width of 4 inches and length of 10 inches. Then we want to circle the keywords of the question, in inches, perimeter, and rectangle. Finally, we'll label the answer choices as perimeter. From the question, we know that we're creating a rectangle. Let's draw one. Then we want to label it. We know that the width of our rectangle is 4 inches and the length is 10 inches. Remember, the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle is the sum of all sides. Now, we simply add the sides, 10 plus 10 plus 4 plus 4. This gives us 28. 
Looking at the answer choices, answer choice C is 28 exactly. Circle that bad boy. I wasn't picked for the advanced art class in high school, even though my mother was sure I could have been the next Frida Kahlo if I only applied myself. But in spite of this, my rudimentary sketching skills were a big help on the math section of the ACT. Making the problem come alive visually can help you figure out the right answer more quickly than other strategies in some cases. So practice drawing pictures as you go through the hundreds of questions we have available to you.